is it A, Rover is going to roll. So you remember last night we came really close to getting him to roll, but for some reason a bunch of bugs appeared. Well, I think I got them all squashed. Let me show you what those bugs were and how I've tackled them. Then we'll get to the actual process of getting Rover's tires on and preparing him for his first steps. The first problem was this guy, the IR sensor. I was getting faulty readings, but I think the faulty readings had more to do with the sharp library, Arduino library, than the actual sensor itself. The other bug had to do with my calibration of the four motors. You probably remember me talking about getting the motors to run at the same speeds, all four of them. Obviously, if some of the motors are not running at the same speed as the others, Rover's not driving in a straight line. What complicated things further in testing was that whether the motors are running forward or backwards, that discrepancy between the motors is actually different. I really struggled with the sensor problem, and it's because I was relying on the Arduino library, which is supposed to simplify things. But what I found was that the Arduino library, where it tries to kind of average the values and give you a more reliable reading, it was confusing thing. When I looked at the actual value coming from the sensor itself, the raw data, um, as it's called, the values were actually pretty consistent. I modified Rover's code to use the raw high-low value from the sensor rather than the average value from the library, and that solved the problem there. The, the uh, left and right sensors, the ultrasonic sensors, they're working and they're reliable, but I don't have them actually functioning as part of the code. So in a second, when we test Rover's code, you'll see that we can actually stop him in his tracks by blocking the IR sensor, but the ultrasonic sensors don't have any impact on his controls yet. I'm going to run a, a couple of tests to show you guys kind of what the result of all the debugging was. Go over to the command center and run a, a drive forward command. Some short one. So there he goes. You've heard the click. He's going to drive forward. And what we're looking for is for the motors to all stop at the same time. And there they are. So basically, that says that the motors are running at the same speed. So if we run that again, what I'll do now is I'll interrupt Rover by putting my hand in front of the sharp sensor. And you can see that he stopped immediately. So we've got that working. Just there we saw Rover drive forward. Now, if I had him turning where, for example, the left and the right are going in opposite directions, or if he's going in reverse, I was getting some sort of discrepancy between the motors where they weren't driving at the same speed and they weren't stopping at the same time. You can imagine the problems that that might cause. But we now have that sorted out and he's ready to roll. So let's mount the, the protective Lexan board so that we could position the batteries on top and get the tires on, probably in the reverse order, actually, now that I think about it. But let's get him ready. two years. And there he is. Is that not awesome or what? As you can probably guess, uh, these arms rotate independently. And the idea is that as he rolls over obstacles, the, the sway in the main chassis is kind of neutralized to a large extent. However, I never actually mounted the main chassis to the arms uh, perfectly level, so I've got to do that. So what you can see now is I can actually rotate the body apart from the legs. So if 
I make them both level and then fasten back down the screws that I just loosened. And I think we're good. So Rover is now nice and level. And as I rotate one leg, the other leg rotates in the opposite direction and his chassis stays level. And there's Rover's brain training. I've been holding off taking off the protective sheet, but I think it's about that time. I suppose it's going to get scratched, but I guess that's part of the process. There's a lot of static on it. Static on it. So we still got to get uh, Rover's Android tablet and situate that somehow on top, temporarily at least. I just realized that I need to connect the USB cable for that. So yeah, it's a learning process. There we have it. He's ready to go. To be honest, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Couldn't help but take a selfie from Rover. see that he is connected to the server and he's communicating with the Arduinos and in a moment you'll see a flash come up to show that he's taking photos and if we flip over to the face hello YouTube he does speak and in a moment we'll also see the most recent photo come up which of course will be me holding this camera well it's about that time we're going to send over the first command. The only kind of word of caution for me is I don't know what distance command in Rover's code actually translates to what distance in the real world. My place is not very large, so I need to send small commands just to get a feel for what sort of distance he's going to cover with, um, with that tire and wheel combination. Um, but let's give him the first command and see what happens. So I'm going to pick a short drive forward command. We only have about, uh, I don't know, five feet in front of them. So I'm going to pick the shortest value I can. Uh, of course, his sensors are working. So if he gets too close to the obstacle in front, it should prevent him from running into it. In theory, of course. But let's give it a go and see what happens. Here we go. It worked. Um, the only issue was my acceleration command was too low, so it really took a long time to get up to any sort of speed. So let's give it a 
go again in reverse and with more acceleration. never been so excited for something so small. <laughs> How about we give them a, uh, a turn command and see what happens. seem to have a, basically either too much friction or not enough torque uh, to turn using differential turning, differential drive. But what I want to try is if we shorten the wheelbase. So that's how Rover's been designed. So I want to see if that actually helps the, the mechanics of it. So let's give it a shot. So let's start with a short reverse command. Forward command. Okay, so that was forward. Let's try reverse. Let's try a little further back. He's trying. So I've realized a few things and I really underestimated the amount of torque and power it takes to, to turn on if you have a wide wheelbase. Um, I did a bit of Googling and yeah, it was, I never understood, I guess, to that extent. So let me show you something. So if I grab Rover's chassis like this and I physically try to turn him, I can't do it. There's too much, there's too much torque. There's, I mean, his tires basically want to kind of stutter sideways. It takes a lot of strength to turn him that, that, like that. I'm not saying that it's not possible, it is, but the amount of power that would be required, my, you know, my first reaction was, wow, I'm, I need stronger motors, uh, but I don't think that's what it is. I, I just don't, I think the, the wheelbase is such that it, it makes it too difficult. Now, Rover's design is such that these can be forward, as you've seen, backward like they are right now, but they can also be ultimately rotated in so that they can be kind of, if you think of like Batman's tumbler, um, that sort of orientation, they can be in that narrow orientation, both front and back, outside the chassis, as well as inside the chassis like this. So imagine these tires being underneath uh, the main chassis. That very small kind of box layout might prove the most feasible in terms of differential turning, but that's gonna have to wait because I'm not gonna bother unscrewing everything just to try to kind of prove it to myself. So for Rover to re realistically be able to turn in most situations, he's gonna ha have to make use of his servos, which of course, he has them and that's how it's been designed. So I'm thrilled. This is, nothing blew up, nothing, nothing fried. All the commands worked from the, from the web server. I mean, yeah, this is incredible. Uh, he's communicating with the web server through the Android tablet. The, everything worked, the batteries, the circuit boards, the power converters, the motors, the encoders, 
the sensors. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, I'm, I couldn't be happier. It's been two years, two and a half years since I started this project. Of course, most of that time was he, Rover spent inside a box, those boxes. Over the past, I don't know, four, six weeks or so where we've been reviving Rover, it's, it's been quite a journey. I've learned so much and I'm, yeah, I couldn't be happier. I appreciate all of you who've been following the, the journey and I hope you'll stay tuned for what's to come next. You know, now that Rover's on his tires, on his wheels, there's so much more fun to be had. One of the thing that, you know, the, one of the very next things that I want to tackle is the servos uh, so that we can get the turning implemented and uh, that way we can both test the other orientations of Rover's chassis with the kind of tumbler layout of the wheels. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.